at the beginning of the service is so that we can just flow, right? Just flow right through it. We just thank the Lord for that. So, Carmen, do you want to ask a blessing upon the offering today, please? Thanks. Thank you, dear Father, for this uh, beautiful day that we're celebrating, your resurrection, that mm -hmm. you gave us uh, salvation by your grace. Mm -hmm. uh, dear Father, put, put in the hearts of the people here, mm -hmm. uh, here who can contribute uh, with, with, um, with um, tidings and um, bless their hearts and, and provide um, these on our roots and, yes, and, you know, the desires of our hearts. Yes, we Lord. trust you and oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. do it with a uh, thanksgiving. Uh, a heart with thanksgiving. Yes, Thank Lord. you, dear Father. Amen. In the That's precious right. name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. God loves the church. We'll give her amen. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's all stand, shall we? Well, good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. Today is the day of celebration, amen, of death conquered. Death has been conquered. The, the grave has been conquered today. Amen? Amen. And that's what today represents. That's what we celebrate today is that, that conquering of death that Jesus brought, the sacrifice that Jesus brought. And we're going to be singing about our living hope this morning. He, he is our living hope. Jesus, our Savior, our Savior today is our living hope. And... I read this this morning and it just really spoke to me and I've heard this before and I just felt to share it again this morning but you know on Friday Good Friday we is is kind of a sombering day or so you know a, a sad day because we think about the sacrifice we think about what Jesus went through it's also a day of celebration but it's a different type it's, it's a day where you really focus on, you know, what, what that sacrifice was. And then Saturday. <laughs> Saturday is kind of that in-between day where there was a lot of silence, right? When, when that would have happened, there, there would have been just this silence where it's just like, what just happened? What just happened? What did we just experience and go through? And then Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, was the day where the lion roared, amen, where death was conquered. Amen. There was an amazing victory. <laughs> we, we can never imagine what that victory felt like for the people that were there and experienced it, the victory, <laughs> because they knew, they knew, they knew Jesus was was special they knew he was different they knew there was something different friday it couldn't be the end it, it couldn't be you know they were probably like how could this be the end but it wasn't it wasn't it was just the beginning amen and um i just want to read something that really stuck out to me it says um it's about the lion of judah Jesus is called the Lamb of God in 1 John, or in John 1, 36, to illustrate his gentleness and willingness to be the sacrifice for our sins. But he is also called the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation 5, 5. And it's to display his absolute authority and power over all creation. A lion may be king of the jungle, but the lion of Judah is the king of kings. <laughs> That's what we celebrate today. Out of yes. the silence that Saturday brought, yes. the roaring lion came out on Sunday. <laughs> and we just celebrate that this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our living hope.
forgiveness, Thank you, you give God. us hope, yes, you give Lord. us joy, you give us peace. Lord, you pick us up when we fall down. Where else would we go, Jesus? You sustain us, mm. you go before us, mm. you live within us by your Holy Spirit. You provide all of our needs, you yes, protect Lord. us, you watch over us, you supply everything that we need. God, where else would we go, Jesus? This world is behind us. Lord, we live in this world, but it is a thing of the past. It is no longer what we live for. Jesus, we live for you. Amen. Amen. We live for you. We desire Hallelujah. to live your will, your yes. plans, yes. your purposes, your thoughts out. We want to follow Jesus. Yes, Lord. We want to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that every person here this morning would make that decision, their final decision, that I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No wavering. No, no getting distracted from the world. I, I am following Jesus, our risen Savior. We've made up our minds, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. No turning back. That's right, Lord. No turning back. And I have to say. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Just make that your declaration. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. That's right, Lord. No, no turning back. There's 
voices this morning. Let's sing that chorus again. God is so good. Just our voices. goodness is going to resound from you and around you. Glory to God. The goodness of God that leads men and women to repentance. Hallelujah. Watch and see what God is going to do. His goodness is going to overflow. Hallelujah. His cup is going to overflow. Amen. With the goodness of God. We declare that today, Father. We receive it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Please be seated. Speaking of the goodness of God. Uh, Reverend Bergen is coming this morning. She's got something that she wants to share with you concerning the goodness of God. Go ahead, Jay, and put it up on the screen. As you know, uh, Reverend Bergen is our missions director. She has been for several months now. She's doing a fantastic job. Well, thank you very much. Isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, I think she meant that for you. <laughs> and, uh, and anyways, Reverend Bergen's been involved quite intensively and extensively with Pakistan. And God put this whole thing together, didn't he? Yes. God did. God, so go ahead and share. God did it. Yes, we have uh, reason to celebrate for more than one reason. I mean, God, um, Christ is risen, hallelujah. And so we celebrate with the congregation in Pakistan. They are saying hallelujah also because uh, we have um, donated 40 new chairs for their congregation, so they don't have to sit on the ground anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So we rejoice with them, and they are celebrating their Easter this time with real chairs yeah. to sit on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, yes, and um, we are, our church is um, this whole year and a half, or almost a year and a half, has been contributing and pouring out their heart for, for different donations and different um, cause, uh, what do you call it, needs that they have. And I want to thank each one of you for being a part mm -hmm. of this mission and a part of supporting the um, Pastor Room Nazri's congregation. So I just want to thank you all. We celebrate today especially for... Um, them also. Yes, amen. Okay, Praise God. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, let's keep with the <clears throat> spirit of worship this morning. Let's set our affections on things above, yeah. Yeah. not things on this earth. And it's a it's a visual focus, sure it is. It's a heart focus, sure it is. It's a spiritual focus, sure it is. Because our identity is in Jesus Christ, not this world. We're not defined by this world. We're right. defined by Jesus in us, right. each of us. Let's celebrate the goodness of God through Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. We can't boast. In any. Can't boast in ourselves or anyone else. We can only boast in Jesus. 
be blessed this morning. We're going to do this song. Gracious God, risen, save day. Gracious God, risen Savior, we stand in awe of all you've given, bow before you now, Savior of the world, we bow before you now in praise. Bow before you now, Savior of the world. Gracious God, risen Savior, we stand in awe with all you've given.
put my bottle of water that was down there. Oh, that would be me. I did that. That would be you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it should be me. <laughs> I should do it again. <laughs> who took my who took my ten thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Great shall be your reward in heaven. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, I want to, uh, just before we get into the word this morning, I just really enjoyed the service. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord. And this is just a little sample, isn't it? It's a taste of what's to come. And I don't mean when we get to heaven. I'm talking about when God pours out his spirit. Amen. And that's what he's doing. But I just want to take a moment to introduce uh, Brendan's mom to you this morning. And uh, I just met her. I am the aunt. Oh, aunt. <laughs> I should have got you to do the... Uh, well, I didn't know that. I didn't okay. know she was dear. Okay, let's start over. Let's start over. <laughs> okay, before we get into the word this morning, I just want to introduce somebody to you. This is Brendan's aunt. <laughs> and uh, anyway, bless you. Uh, Brenda. Brenda. Okay. Wow. <laughs> all right, that's all done. Anybody else here as well? Oh, Judy, good to have you here as well, Judy, and all of you here this morning. Amen. This morning, I want to just kind of go along with uh, our Friday service message, which was called Life Through Death. And uh, the first part that we looked at on Friday was taking up the cross. Today, I want to talk about number two, part two, the abundant life. The abundant life. As you know, the Christian life is a paradox. A paradox. And for example, if we want to be strong, we have to become weak. If we want to be great, we have to serve, right? That's a paradox that the Bible is filled with. If, if we want God's blessing, we have to be a blessing. It's a paradox. And there's many others as well in the Bible concerning that. If you want to be exalted, you have to be humble, right? If you want to be first, you have to be last. last. God bless you, all you last people. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful to be last? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And if you want to truly live, you have to truly die. Thank you. Good job. God bless you. See you next week. You all did great. Amen. <laughs> that was good. I want to read you uh, Cindy's post that she put on Facebook this morning. And I read it. It's, it's short, but boy, it's powerful. Listen to what which she wrote here this morning. God gives her some really powerful words. And she wrote this, God finishes what he begins. <laughs> Jesus did not stay in the grave. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and the plan of salvation began throughout the earth. Now listen to this, church. Listen, because there's somebody here this morning, and this is for you. Just because something looks dead does not mean it's the end. It could be just the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive that this morning. Amen. Something might look dead in your life right now, but it's just God preparing a resurrection of whatever that thing happens to be. I've experienced that many times in my life, and I'll experience it again many times as well. When something seems like it's 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 over and it's useless, and there's no point in even praying about it anymore. <laughs> no, God says, no, it, it may look dead. It's not dead. God says, I'm going to raise it up, and it's going to be a greater blessing in your life and to those around you than anything else could have been prior to his resurrection of that thing, whatever it happens to be. Hallelujah. That's, that's how God works. And so we're talking about abundant life through death. I want you to look at John chapter 12, because this is Christ speaking to his disciples. He's at the, that, that last uh, season now where he knows that his time has come, his work is done, you know, he's raised up his disciples, he's preached the kingdom of God, and now it's time for him to go to the cross. He knows that. And he says, Jesus answered them, his disciples. And he says this, the hour has come, here it is, for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. That's the reason why God sometimes puts things to death. So that there can be a fruit bearing and a harvest, hallelujah, when that thing is resurrected and raised back up. 
So he says, uh, a grain of wheat that falls into the ground is going to die. And if it does not fall into the ground, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it. In other words, if we're all hung up about ourselves, we're going to miss out on God's greater destiny and plan. That's what he's talking about. Amen. And he goes on to say, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. He doesn't mean hating your life in a, in a you know, sense that we understand it. But he's talking about where your life doesn't matter anymore. Your life doesn't count anymore compared to God's greater glory. We talked about that on Friday, dying to ourselves. And Christ is, is drilling this into his disciples. And in verse 26, he says, if anybody serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Now listen to this, church. Here is abundant life in a nutshell. If anybody serves me, the Father will honor him. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I want to be honored by God, not just when I stand before him and hear him say, well, done." No, I, I believe Christ is talking about if we put our hearts and our minds uh, and we are determined, as we sang this morning, to follow Jesus and to do his will and not our will, God, Christ promises, is going to come and honor us. However he does that is up to him. But he will probably blow your minds when he does. It's going to be greater. It's going to be deeper and, and, and a greater measure than what you could even imagine here today when God honors you simply because you've allowed him to put that death process into your life. No longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Isn't that right? Yep. I am crucified with Christ, Paul said. Yep. It's no longer me that lives. And so when we come to that place, and it's a journey, it is, it's a process. When we come to that place, you can be sure that there's going to come a time when the Father is going to see you and recognize you. Look at my son, look at my daughter. They are exactly where I want them to be. They are, they, they are committed to my will. They are, they are so earnestly seeking my plan for their life. They're not concerned about their life. They're not concerned about their comfort. They're not concerned about their recognition. They're not concerned about their platform or ministry or calling or anything like that. They just simply want me. Hallelujah. We sang that this morning, church. Christ is enough. And when we were singing that, I heard you guys singing that. And I knew it wasn't just a song coming out of your lips. I knew that you meant business with God. Christ is enough. When we come to that place, God is going to come down and he's going to honor you honor you, right? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. Die to yourself. That's what it means to humble yourself. Die, die, die to yourself. And God is going to raise you up, praise the Lord, as only he can do. So much better when God does it than we try to do it ourselves, because that only fails. But when God raises you up and honors you, you can be sure that you're going to be in a position where your life is now going to be exactly where you've always wanted to be. Totally, probably, uh, you know, not even what you were expecting or thinking <coughs> when God does it. Amen. And so during this Easter time and beyond, we are going to begin to learn and understand and grow in the abundant life that Christ has given to us. Amen. And so the question this morning is, what exactly is the abundant life? You know, we, we, we quote that all the time. I've come that you might have life and life more abundant. Well, what does he mean by that? Well, the word abundant, listen to this. In the Greek is periso, it means this, exceedingly beyond measure, more than what one could expect or anticipate, a superior quantity. That's what it means to have an abundant life. Superior quantity, more than what you would even expect, beyond measure. Many years ago when Julie and I were living out in New Dundee, we were kind of on a farm setting and Matthew was this little boy at that time. Don't worry, Matthew, this is not a story about you, all right? <laughs> and anyways, my wife and I, you know, like, we've never planted a garden in our life. So we thought we were going to try it that year because we had the, the ground to do it. It was already there. We just had to kind of redig it again. It was a nice big patch of ground. And so we thought, let's try it. Let's see what happens. We don't know anything about gardening. Nothing. All we did was dig up the ground, put in the seeds, put in the plants, and, uh, you know, covered it up, put some water on it. And we had no idea what was going to happen. And we were just totally amazed as a couple of months later, we had this amazing, abundant crop of vegetables. Hey, dear, uh, zucchini that were like three feet long. <laughs> well, uh, almost. <laughs> and, um, and tomatoes and, and radishes and you name it. 
we had it. We were, we were just standing in our garden. Wow, I can't believe this. That was an abundant uh, harvest. And that's the one and only time that we've ever experienced that kind of an abundant harvest. We tried again later on, and it just didn't work. <laughs> so we kind of give it up on the, the whole uh, vegetable garden aspect. Now we just plant flowers, and that's fine too. But that's, what, but that's what Jesus is talking about, is that when we simply trust him, church, when we simply allow him to live his life in me, right? That's what it comes down to. Not I, but Christ. John the Baptist said that I've got to decrease. He has to increase in my life. And, and as we do that, you're going to see more and more and more fruit coming forth from you, glory to God. And that fruit is going to be the evidence that your life is hid with Christ in God. That it's going to be evidence that you are dying to sell. People are going to recognize it. People are going to see it. They're going to take notice. They're going to mention it. What's going on with you? I haven't seen you for a while, but boy, there's something different about you. I see such joy. I see such, you know, blessing in your life. What's happening? Well, I'm just dying, right? I'm just dying. And I'm letting Christ live in me. Church, it's not complicated. Reverend Darren all says that all the time. It's not complicated. It's simple. That's probably why we miss it. But God is faithful to his word. When we simply say, yes, Lord, and, and say, not me, but you, then he begins to honor us, hallelujah, as only he can do. So that's the blessing that God wants to pour out upon us during this abundant life as we are now going into new horizon in 2022, hallelujah. And so Jesus was simply saying this, I have come for you to have an abundance, listen, I have come for you to have an abundance of superior growth, superior spiritual growth in your life. Boy, I love to see that in people. I love to see them growing in the Lord. You know, and it doesn't happen day by day by day, but when over the course of time you see such a, major, real, genuine difference in their spiritual life, hallelujah. You know, and you can see the glory of God shining upon them. And you can see the fruit of the Spirit pouring out of their lives, hallelujah. So Jesus came to give us superior growth. He came to give us superior increase, church, increase. God wants to expand your borders in this time of abundant life. He wants to increase you. He wants to, he wants to take you into new territories. He wants to raise you up to do greater exploits, greater things than you have ever yet done in all the years of your life serving the Lord. That's what God desires to do, and I want that from the Lord. And I want my life to be such an increase of God's goodness, His love, His peace, His blessing to just flow and overflow <laughs> in my life to those around me. That's what I want. And I thank God that that's happening, glory to God. He wants to give you superior reaping, amen? Reaping for all that you've sown over the years. You've sown in tears. You've sown with a broken heart. You've sown when there's nothing left to sow. You've sown when you feel like it's dry, it's dead, it's done. And that's when God comes along and he wants to give you a, a superior reaping, hallelujah, for all that you've sown in faith and in love. And then also God wants to give you a superior life, a superior life, a superior, abundant, blessed, highly favored, yes. highly favored, come on, as we sang this morning, life anointed, empowered by the Holy Ghost, not a nominal Christian who's just getting by and going through the motions, playing church, that's not an abundant life, church, it's not, an abundant life is when you were so close to God, when you were so drawing into the presence of the Lord, because you're hungry for God, because you desire Him above everything else, that's the abundant life that kicks in right then and there, you don't have to work it up, you don't have to try to, you know, jump and, and, and shout and dance and Hoot, and there's nothing wrong with those things. I'm saying that's not what you have to do in order for the Holy Ghost to start bringing that abundant power in your life, hallelujah. That's going to bring forth a harvest of fruit, amen. And so maybe you're thinking here this morning, well, Pastor Mike, I don't know about you, but all I have is an abundance of tears, an abundance of trials, a bunch, an abundance of troubles, and an abundance of tribulations. That's all I've got. Huh? Okay, great. That's excellent. I'm happy for you. Why? <laughs> because there's a saying that, you know, when it comes to physical exercise, and David knows this very well. David, no pain. No gain. No gain. <laughs> Doesn't that encourage you this morning? Yeah. <laughs> no pain, no gain. But it's true. 
It is really true. Spiritually speaking, it is very, very true. And that's the whole reason that God allows us to go through these trials and tears and tribulations and temptations and troubles. Because it is through that process that God is developing our faith. Church, listen to me. Because we don't know exactly what's ahead. There could be some real, real perilous times just ahead. And it's our faith that is going to enable you and I, come on, not just to endure, but to overcome. I'm not interested in just getting by. Oh, God, I just want to hang on until you come, Lord. God, I'm just going to hang on until you come, Lord. No. No, don't, if you ever hear me praying that, kick me or do something. <laughs> Tell me to shut up. Because <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to leave this world like that. Are you kidding? I want to leave powerful, militant, overcoming, triumphant, anointed. Oh my goodness, that's that's what I want from God. Amen. And that is our prayer. That's our desire. And it comes, church, when the Holy Ghost begins to develop that abundant life in you. And so I see that I'm not trying to be you know, uh, silly or anything like that. But of course we go through trials. I know some of you here this morning are going through some really, really hard times and difficulties. And I'm telling you here today, based upon the word of God, that if you will simply trust the Lord, trust the Lord, then you're going to see God come to come into your life and he's going to bring to pass all that you have desired, all that you have needed of, and it's all found in Jesus the abundant life. He said, I've come that you might have life. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the devil does. And so many of God's people give in to that, 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 that fear. They give in to that, that testing time. Instead of standing firm in the word of God, instead of overcoming, they give in to defeat and to fear and to all of those other things, despair and hopelessness. But God wants us to stand strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. It's not strength in ourselves. In our strength, we have to become weak, glory to God. We die to ourselves so that we can live the abundant life that Jesus Christ comes to give us. And so it's true. No pain and no gain. Now, I want you to see what Christ says here in John chapter 10. Are you there, Jay? Or did I miss it? There we are. Jesus said this to his disciples, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil has a way of doing that. He knows how to do that. He's been doing it for years. But Jesus said, But I have come that they may have life. Amen. And he didn't stop there. He said, And that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. More abundantly. And so the question is, Lord, when when were you talking about that abundant life? Are you talking about right here and now, or are you talking about later on when we all get to heaven? What a joy that will that will be. No, Christ is saying, church, that we can have that abundant life right here and now. Amen. Amen. Right. right here and now. Listen, we do not follow the pattern of the world. The, the world is, is just uh, reeling right now in confusion, but we're not. The world is reeling right now in economic depression and, and, and fear. We're not. The world is reeling right now in all kinds of perplexities and, 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 and uncertainties and fears and, and anguish and wars and all of those other things. Church, let me tell you something. The church of Jesus Christ is not in that place. Hallelujah. Amen. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony this morning. Amen. What is our testimony? He's alive. Glory to God. That's our testimony this morning. He's alive, glory to God. All these other false gods are dead. They're done. They're powerless. They're just a, a memory. No, Jesus Christ is alive and well, hallelujah. And he is here amongst his people. And he's going to bring us through. Why? Because Jesus promised. He said in Matthew 18, he said, I'm going to build my church. Pardon me, I think it's Matthew 16, verse 18. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's God's promise to you and I. And so when you ever feel like you're, you're beginning to faint, to falter, to give up, no, remember his promise. He said, listen, my son, listen, my daughter, listen, my child. I'm going to build my church. You are my church. You're part of my church. And the devil cannot prevail against you. Hallelujah. Because I've already won the battle. I've already prevailed on the cross. I've already prevailed when the tomb was open. And I was not there. Hallelujah. That's where we come, church, to that place of victory in Jesus, that place of overcoming power and anointing and authority in our life. 
so that we can stand in the day of battle and not give in and not turn back. We sang that this morning. We're not turning back. We're going forward into the very yes. destiny that God has called us to. Praise the Lord. Yes. Oswald Chambers wrote this. Because of what the Son of Man went through, every human being has been provided with a way of access into the very presence of God. That is abundant life. Jesus made a way for every single man, woman, boy, and girl upon this planet to come to know the abundant life that everybody is seeking for, whether they will admit it or not, church. There are many people today that are all caught up in all kinds of false religions. They're caught up in all kinds of New Age uh, religions and everything else that uh, that goes with that. They're, they're seeking for truth, but they don't know where to find it. And they're seeking in the wrong places. I want to show you something here. It's, uh, oh, go ahead, Jane. I'll show it. Julie and I, yesterday, we were in the uh, dollar store, and um, <laughs> they've got this book section. And I, I saw this, and I just I just had to laugh, and I had to take a picture of it. There we are. That's a, that's, that is a perfect representation of the world and the church, right? Both of them are claiming this is the truth. This is the way. This is the, this is the knowledge. This is the reality. This is what you're seeking for. Astrology, no. The Holy Bible, yes. That's such a comparison of the church today and, and the enemy's deception. Truth and lies. Truth and error. And so that's what we saw. And I had to take a picture of that. And uh, did you know that more than one-third of Canadians believe in astro astrology? More than one-third. That's a lot of people that believe in astrology, especially among young people. And they are looking for abundant life. That's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for purpose, right? They're looking for uh, the reason for their life. They're looking for what the meaning of their life, and they're not finding it. They're not finding it. They're looking in all the wrong places. They're listening to all the wrong voices when there's only one voice, and it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. There's only one way, and it's the way that leads to Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. And that's where you and I come in, church. We are the answer that they need. We have the hope that they need, the living hope we sang about this morning. And so instead of us hiding ourselves away, you know, so that this world just kind of passes by, no, we need to be out there in the highways and in the byways. We need to be out there. We need to start raising up our voice. We need to start declaring who Jesus is, glory to God, because there are people out there that need to know the truth. Otherwise, they're going to get caught up in all kinds of lies and deception. So we have the truth, and they need to know that truth. What is astrology? It's a type that's on the screen. Look at astrology. This is how serious it is. We're not just talking about fun. <laughs> it's not fun. Right? We're not just talking about reading your horoscope in the paper, and it's fun. No, it's not fun. It's very serious. Astrology is a type of divination involving the forecasting of earthly and human events through the observation of the stars, the sun, the moon, and the planets. And so in other words, in every, whatever way the planets are all lined up at certain particular times, then you know, we can understand you know, what is going to be happening in this world with world events and in our personal lives. All things are going to be, what, what a lie. What deception that is. Divination is witchcraft. That's the bottom line. And God forbids divination in his word. Look at what it says here. Astrology originated in Babylon 500 years before Christ. Go ahead, Jay. This is the prophet Isaiah speaking to Israel that were turning to uh, astrologers for their answers instead of turning to God for the truth. And he says, as you, Israel, you are worn out with your many consultations. Isn't that interesting, eh? We have a consultation with a fortune teller. We have a consultation with astrologers, and they're going to tell you your future. They're going to tell you which way to go. No, God, God has the power. God has the wisdom. God has the beginning and the end of your life. Amen. So let the astrologer stand and save you. He's kind of mocking now. Oh, you're going to turn to a Sure, let them save you. Forget God. No, no, you found the truth. He's mocking them. Let the astrologer stand and save you, those who observe the stars and predict monthly what will happen to you. Verse 14, look, they are like stubble. Fire burns them up. They cannot deliver. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. So even Israel, 
way back in the day, 500 years before Christ, were turning to the stars, to the heavens, to the moon, to the sun, for direction, for the future. And it's still happening today. And so we're talking here this morning about life through death. Life through death. And I want to close this message with one last verse. It's on the screen. Oh, did we miss it, Jay? Okay. Don't, don't turn there yet. <laughs> All right, that's probably my mistake. But if you remember last Friday, on Friday, we were talking about checklists and how, how great it is to, you know, mark off a checklist. And, and I kind of made the reference of Jesus having a checklist. Go ahead. And, and some of the things that Christ had on his checklist was to come to earth, check that one off, to preach repentance, check that one off, to teach the kingdom, check that one off, to train 12 disciples, he checked that one off, establish the church, he checked that one off, die on a cross, he checked that one off, and there's one more, and there it is right there, to rise from the dead, and he checked that one off, glory to God, one after another, after another, after another, Jesus Christ has died, and he's been and he's been risen again, glory to God. That is the fi finality of all that Christ had to do. The only thing left for Jesus to do now is when, when the Father says, Go, my son, now's the time. He's going to come back to receive his church that is waiting for him, that has been faithful to God, and, and we desire him. He's coming back for his church, and he's going to take us out of this world, and we're going to be with him forever and forever and forever. Hallelujah. I want to close with this verse. I think now it's on the screen. There it is. Paul wrote this in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Let this be your prayer, would you, today? Let this be your prayer. Paul says, Oh, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Isn't that amazing? Paul called it a fellowship of his sufferings. We wouldn't kind of think of it that way, would we? Fellowship? <laughs> suffering? Fellowship? The word fellowship is supposed to be a word of blessing, a word of joy. Well, that's exactly what Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Church, you want the power of the resurrection? Yes. Then you're going to have to obtain it through the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Praise God. That's Paul's prayer. That should be your prayer and my prayer today. As we anticipate what God is going to do in the days to come in the months to come, and in the remaining time of this year, 2022. And I believe that with all of my heart, that as we as we seek God, and as we simply say, Lord, yes, 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 to your will, Lord, I want to know you, as the Apostle Paul desired. I want to know you. I want to know the power that God has for me in the resurrection of Jesus. I want to be quickened by that same power of the Holy Ghost that raised Christ from the dead. Lord, I want to have that fellowship of your sufferings. I want to suffer with you, not for you. I want to suffer with you, Lord. I want to come into that intimacy of your suffering, Jesus, what you did for me. Lord, I want to just reflect that in my life, God. I want to die to all that is within me. I want to die to self. I want to die to my pride. I want to die to my ambitions. I want to die, Lord God. And the only way to do that, Father, is to, is to live through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And so we live, church, through death. Amen. Amen. Stand with me, please. We're going to uh, we're going to just take a moment here today to worship the Lord. And I'd like uh, the worship team to come on up. We're going to sing, God, you're so good. It's on the screen, Julian. Just follow along. There. We're going to sing this song again uh, this morning because it is such a powerful truth. Hallelujah. God is so good. And as we sing it one more time, church, put your heart into it. Make it personal between you, you and the Lord. And as we sing it, let's just keep in mind, you know, before God, Lord, I want to die to myself. Lord, I don't want things to offend me. I don't want people to disturb me. I don't want, I don't want any experiences, Lord, to weigh me down. And, 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 and Father, to, to have that great heavy burden upon my life that keeps me back. I don't want those things, God. I want to die to all that is within me. I want to die to everything that I'm all about, Lord. And I want you to live your life, your resurrection power through me. And so, God, whatever that's going to take, please, that's what I'm asking you this morning, to do that very thing.
Every day I give thanks, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning, Lord, to come to you, Lord God. We are nothing before you, Lord God. We are broken. We are empty. We are lost. Lord God, we are hurting. But Lord, who do we have in heaven but you? Yes, Lord. Who do we have in heaven but you this morning, Lord God? We empty ourselves before you, Lord. And we come with an expected heart. That we will not leave the same way we come in. Amen, amen, amen. But we are going out with power. We are going out with authority. Yes. We are going out anointed. Yes. Because we know that we have been with the resurrected Christ. Your name, Jesus, is truth. Your name is truth. And we are walking out this morning with truth. So, Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you go before us, Lord God. That the word is now behind us. Now we walk with power and authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that you bless everyone that's in here this morning. That they will leave with power and authority. They will know their identity in Christ this morning. When they walk out that door. That when the enemy approaches, them, Lord God. They will open their mouth and they'll speak truth. That means it's Jesus. That is the truth. That is the life and the word, Lord God. So Lord, let your people be free this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Our service is over. Please stick around and have some.